the one with the rifle gets killed. The one who is following picks up the rifle and shoots. Welcome to the 12th episode of the Pick Up the Rifle and Shoot series, featuring my 1944 Lee Enfield No. 4 Mark I, more commonly known as the No. 4. The No. 4 is best known for its use by the British Empire in World War II, but also continues to serve even decades after, especially in countries who've gained their independence since. The No. 4 is arguably the best combat effective bolt-action rifle of World War II, With its very quick cock on close action, 10 round capacity, and peep sight, it's very hard to beat. So here she is, my 1944 Lee Enfield No. 4 Mark I. My collection of Milser bolt actions are primarily cock on open. From Mosin's to Mauser's, it's all I've ever really known. Now my number 4 is my first cock on close rifle, and after shooting her, I must admit, why did I take so long to get one? Her action is very slick and fast, the peep sights are excellent and quick to come on target, and she's accurate to boot. She is truly an exceptional rifle. Now I'll go over in more detail, but first let's make sure she's all clear. First up is the buttstock with a beautiful brass butt plate. Next is the receiver socket. The socket has the engravings of 1944 and M47C, which is for the manufacturer BSA, Birmingham Small Arms in Shirley, England. The serial number of E32241 is also present below just very difficult to make out. On the left side of the receiver has the engravings of number 4 Mark 1 F FTR 48 along with the serial number. The F stands for Zachary, which did the FTR, factory thorough repair, a refurbishment in 1948. Up top she has the standard large aperture peep sight and when flipped up the adjustable micrometer peep sight with a smaller aperture can be used which is actually very precise. Under the top forend near the collar, the five groove barrel has stamps of 44 and M47C, which I believe is the original barrel that came with the rifle. Also the bore itself is in very good condition, with strong rifling from the chamber all the way to the clean and crisp crown. On the business end, the front side is windage adjustable, but can be replaced for different heights for elevation. I do want to note that the barrel does spring back in center from all around, which leads me to believe that the FDR did a proper stocking when they replaced the stock. Now let's flip her on to the other side. Here's another view of the beautiful brass butt plate and butt stock. Next is the bolt which matches the receiver and socket. The bolt head is the number 3 and also has the M47C stamp. The trigger guard and pin trigger is from Savage and the magazine is not matching, but the follower does have a Circle B stamp on it. And lastly, the import stamps on the right side of the barrel. Overall, I'm very happy with my number 4 Mark I. I did have to replace the extractor spring and ejector screw to get cases to eject properly, but that was done after I shot her for this video. Although she's not completely original when she left BSA Shirley in 1944, I believe the FDR it was done was a good thing, and it made her into a very good shooter, as you'll see. Now let's get on with the shooting. Off to the 25 yard range.
I decided to zero her at 25 yards, center mass, point of aim, point of impact. The ammo I'm using is Greek Surplus 303 HXP ammo from 1985. After adjusting the micrometer one click up from the bottom, I proceeded to shoot three rounds to confirm my zero. As you can see, all three rounds hit center to target, with two stacked on each other. So far, so good. Now, let's see how she does at 200 yards. My first shots with a 25 yard zero were about 3 to 4 inches low from center, and the windage was fine. I decided to adjust my rear sight two more clicks up and proceeded to shoot five rounds using a 6 o'clock hold. The target I'm using is the NRAC 200 yard target, which has a 13 inch black circle. I also put a shoot and see 12 inch circle target so I can see my hits on my spotting scope. I went downrange to confirm what I saw in my spotting scope, a 5 and 3 quarter inch group. I was impressed, especially with my first outing at 200 yards. Now let's go back to the firing line and load up another 5 rounds. In my opinion, 10 rounds gives the shooter the best measure of what their rifle is capable of and what they're capable of, and 5 rounds just isn't enough. As you can see, three of the rounds hit the same area from the first group, and with that data, I can conclude that my 1944 Lee Enfield No. 4 Mark I can do 2.79 MOA with the ammo that I'm using, Greek Surplus 303 HXP. Shooting 10 rounds gives me an honest measurement of my capability with the ammo that I'm using. 
I will measure 8 out of 10 rounds 80%, allowing 2 for shooter errors and flyers. I know I can definitely do better with more trigger time, but for now, this is very satisfying. With all the seriousness out of the way, it's time to have some fun. My range now allows steel targets at the 200 yard range, but they must be placed in a designated area about 7 yards further out. So I challenged myself with my remaining 5 rounds to see if I could hit the steel, slung up in the sitting position. Let's see how it went. I was able to hit the steel 4 out of 5 times on the 15 and a 15.5 inch steel gong. My hits were to the right and the 5th round just missed the edge of the steel. Nothing wrong with the rifle, that's all me. I should have held just a little to the left when using a sling. My shots always go to the right when slung up. So there you have it. My 1944 Lee Enfield No. 4 Mark 1. Still doing it after all these years. Shooting my number 4 was quite an exhilarating experience. The Kong Kong close really supercharges the action. Definitely a far cry from what I'm used to. I'm very thankful for having her as part of my collection, especially since she was manufactured during wartime. I can only imagine what she's been through. What an exceptional rifle. Till next time, thanks for watching.